In this video, we're going to go over some of the best Figma community files that you guys can find right now. These are all absolutely free and you can find them all in the description. So first things first, we've got a freebie here by the Saga team, and this is a brutal UI concept for Figma. Now, a lot of Figma prototypes and UI kits are very clean, very minimal, very in style, in trend and very usable, right? But what these guys did is they created an interface that is completely the opposite of that. Now, this is definitely usable. It's definitely applicable to a lot of projects if you want to go that way, but this is different. It's not the usual type like untitled UI or even Reloom. It's nothing like that. It's the opposite way. It's very grunge, very um, brutalist. And that is that has its benefits. Some people want that kind of project and want that kind of look. So it's important to also design for those type of people, right? I'm going to hit command period right there so we can see the full design system here and see what it comes with. So it's got a few things here. It's got the primary colors, secondary and the neutrals. So this is pretty basic in terms of color schemes. We want to have a few different colors that we can use no matter what. So we've got the the typefaces here, we've got a do font family. Now, if I remember correctly, a do is not a public font for everyone to use, but it might be. So don't come after me if I got that wrong, but I'll make sure I leave it in the description if it is. So we've got a few different typefaces here. We've got a do, archivo, and chivo, right? So these can all be used in tandem together to create a different type of feeling and a different type of UI kit. Now, here we have some examples. We've got the home screen. We've got a library, a song screen, and also a collapsed an accordion menu or like an FAQ or something like that. And you can kind of imagine how we would use these different fonts to create different type of effects and different types of screens. Now, this is a great file, but one thing I would like to see more from this is maybe a mobile version, a mobile UI kit. How would I use this in different breakpoints? How would I use this for a tablet? Basically all of the entire responsive layout. That would be pretty cool to see. But again, it's a huge step forward for different types of UI kits when they're a little bit different. Okay, let's jump to the next one because we have a lot to get through here. So let's see. The next one is a freelance contract template. Now you guys know how much I vouch for freelance contracts and how important they are whenever you're creating a new project, even if it's for a small fee. And before on the channel, I've talked a lot about Hello Bonsai and I'll leave the description down below if you want to check them out. But they're basically a service where you can create contracts for your clients, but that does cost a lot of money and this is free. So it has its benefits. So this is a contract template that you guys can fill out and change to whatever aspects you want it to be. You can add different deliverables here. You can add different prices. And because this is a Figma file, a lot of this is built with auto layout and also components. So that's pretty incredible. Now, what we want to do in this video right here is showcase some files that aren't being shown by other designers and other YouTubers. And you no, know, a lot of these files will not be directly useful to you, but you'll be able to learn about some of the aspects and some of the powers that you can do with Figma, whether that's maybe you just haven't mastered auto layout yet, or you haven't learned constraints, or you haven't really learned the power of frames or whatever it is, right? This is going to be sort of a lesson in quotes for you guys to understand the entire power of Figma and how important it is for you guys to really learn everything about it. So we just covered contracts and how easy it is to create something like a contract for your clients. But now we've got something a little bit different again. Boom, hitting you with a different one. We've got 3D shapes for your designs. Now, 3D shapes are very in trend at the minute. People love using 3D objects, 3D people, 3D hands. And I've even made a video specifically about where people get a lot of the 3D illustrations from. So if you want to watch that one, click somewhere around this video. But this is a library dedicated for very basic shapes. So we've got donuts or toruses here in two different directions. We've got a sphere, we've got a pill shaped, we've got a round cube in two different directions as well. We've got cubes, we've got cylinders and also cones. So the cool thing about this is that as you can see, they come in different colors. So if you're creating a design system that primarily works with blue colors or black colors or green colors, whatever, well, then now you have a system where you can use 3D shapes with. And over here, they provided some examples and where you could use these shapes and how you would actually be able to, to sort of see them in real life. Life, and this is a pretty good, neat little example on a use case. Now, next one is one of my absolute favorite things I've ever seen on Figma and shout out to the Figma Twitter team because I saw this thanks to them. So this is a interior design kit completely based in Figma. And the cool thing about this is that it's a very modular system. They use components, they use variants, they use auto layout to create a floor map. Now, if you've ever moved house or if you've ever moved apartment, you know how cool it is to sort of start to imagine how things can be laid out in the apartment or your house or whatever. And I recently just did that. So this will come very, very in handy. Now, again, this is not something you're going to use every day, but look how cool it is to use layouts or to use variants in this way. As you can see on the left side here on the sidebar, we use components for all of this. It's got assets. It's got 
variants. It's got auto layout. And let me show you guys the different pages here. Here we've got an example of how to use it. And then we've got the different components. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about here, right? We've got different components for different types of rooms. So we've got lounge, work, sleep, bathroom, kitchen, laundry, and more items. But if we go into the example here, we can see exactly how we would use this. So here we have the kitchen diner. So let's say that I want to change this couch to be maybe instead of a four person couch, maybe a two person couch, maybe without the low couch. So we click none. So now we've got that. And then maybe I want this to be instead of a two person table, I want it to be a three person table or a four person table, something like that. So maybe I can increase the width here all the way to 180. And now that's a three person table. Maybe I want this kitchen to be small instead or this sink. And then I can also change this, this countertop to be maybe 35 or maybe 75. And you can start to understand how cool this would be for in a, an architect or an interior designer to really start mapping out everything directly in Figma. That's how cool this is guys. But wait, there's more. This is some next level shit right here. If I go ahead and change the size of this, most of the components here will scale along with the room. So I won't have to go ahead and change this well, some items will, but most of them, as you can see here, stay constrained to the actual room, which is super, super cool. Next one here is invoice template. So again, alongside the contracts, this is sort of similar. This is an invoice template that you can create with your own customer details, your own client details, whatever item you want to add. And again, we've got different items here based on auto layout. And if you can tell, I'm pretty in favor of this because if I want to go ahead and add an item here, I just click command D. And now I can change this design to be something like the tutorial, tutorial, <laughs> tutorial video, and we'll charge them 40,000, right? Now, unfortunately, this doesn't automatically add up the prices, but you can see how cool this is to be able to create invoices directly in Figma so you don't need to rely on other products like Hello Bonsai or Client Enjoy, anything like that, right? Next up is an isometric city. Now, again, this is going to be used by a lot of people if you know how to use it right. Isometric cities and isometric design are very popular in the landing page world. And people like to use the isometric designs to showcase their product and to showcase how cool and different and modern they are. So this is a great way to get into that without hiring a designer, without hiring a whole team to do it. And this is pretty, pretty cool. So here we have a city and it relies again on components and variants. So over here, I've started to plot out what my city would look like and how cool that would be. But as you can see here, there's a few different parts to it, right? If I go into the asset panel, we'll see how many different assets we can add here. And we can start to really just create our city and start to expand what our illustration could look like. Again, all free, all available to you right now in the community. So I'm just going to start adding a few things here and I'll make this quick because this isn't the most entertaining thing in the world. But as you can see here, we can start adding a city and start to customize this pretty quickly. Now, if I wanted to change this roof over here, maybe I can change it to be from Southwest angle to Southeast ledge. So this is very changeable, very interactable. If I want to change this to a solo tree, I can make this into a solo planter and I'll do the same thing here. I'll change this to that. So you can see how cool this is if I wanted to create a feature section and explain my product and maybe I add in an illustration of a car or a motorcycle if I have a motorcycle product, right? Whatever it is. Very, very cool. Next up is glassy cards. Now, glassy cards is nothing new, but a lot of people don't know how to use Gaussian blurs, which is worrying to say the least. But this community file right here will teach you exactly how to do it. So this is a great way to get into Gaussian blurs. And you can see the use case here. A lot of people like to use this glass effect to create guides or to create cards, as you can see here. And this is a great way to get into it, right? If you can duplicate this and see exactly how people create these files and create this effect using the background blur here and using the different types of widths and strengths and all of that, well, then that's extremely, extremely valuable. Now, before we get into the last one here, if you have enjoyed this video so far, then you already know what to do. Leave a comment, subscribe, comment, all of that. So on to the next one and the last one, project proposals, very similar to the previous one that we just covered for invoices, but this is directly dedicated for proposals. Now proposals are one of the most important parts of getting clients and becoming a freelancer, because if you can create a good proposal, well then you can land a lot of clients and close a lot of leads. Now this is a very basic proposal and a very basic template, but if you can create a great outline for your client, well then it's incredibly useful, right? You don't need to go ahead and use all the fancy templates out there. If this is exactly what you need, 
need. You need a very basic proposal just to send it, just to get it out there without even going into Word document or anything like that. Well, then this is perfect for you, right? It's directly in Figma. It's free. You can duplicate it. What else do you need, right? I mean, if I had this when I was starting out, it would have been great. It would have saved me time, money, effort. I mean, it's all here. This person shows you exactly how to use this, how to duplicate it. And I'm here to explain it to you in the first place. So if you guys want to check out all the links that I just mentioned in this video, all seven of these links, then make sure you check out the description because they will all be there. So if you guys enjoyed the video, then make sure they like and subscribe and comment which one of these was your favorite. If you liked any of them or if you didn't think any of them was useful. Now, there's a few in here that maybe they're not extremely useful for you, but who knows? There's probably something in here for everyone. So let me know down below and I'll see you guys on the next one.